Hi, Peter Walker here and welcome to today's edition of The Transition Guy. We are in at Atlanta at the Scale Up Summit and joining me today is Kerry Kaufman, who is also a fellow colleague, coach, both an action coach and in Scaling Up. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me, Peter. So it's been an interesting conference so far. And one of the big topics that seemed to be coming out from all the speakers, apart from the one on artificial intelligence, of course, mm -hmm. was around, the one around trust. Yeah. Now, why do you think trust has become such a big thing? As a couple of the speakers pointed out today, if you peel back the problems that you have in a company, whether they're team engagement issues, retention, customer service issues, at the core is always trust, right? Is there clarity? Do I trust that somebody has my best interest in mind? Uh, do I trust we have the same motivations? Do you have the right character and the right competence? Uh, those are really at the core that they might be disguised as other problems. And how often do we see this playing out with our clients? When you think about it, all the time. I mean, when I think back to my clients, a lot of the challenge that we have is actually the behaviors of both the leader and the team. Wherever I see friction really playing its part, it's where trust has been broken. Mm -hmm. I heard a statistic the other day, and I'm going to butcher the exact number, but it was roughly two thirds of employed people are at least passively job searching, if not actively. So the level of loyalty there is so low because they're not always confident, perhaps, that their employer has their best interest in mind or that they're going to achieve their goals there. Why do you think we're fine? Well, why do you think that so many businesses out there now find it difficult to engage with their people? because that never used to be a problem in the past. I mean, if you go back, what has fundamentally changed for us to stop having the ability to build trust? I don't know that it's changed. I think just the way our society reacts to it now has changed. If you think about uh, my parents or even more specifically my grandparents' generation, it was a mentality. The culture was you get a good job and you keep it 40, 50 years, right? And our culture has shifted away from that now. And it didn't necessarily mean it, it was po probably a false sense of trust. Um, maybe the most they could trust was that they were going to have a pension at the end of it. Um, and that trust has been eroded. That doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, but I don't know that there were, it really created trust or it just gave the illusion of trust because that was considered the norm. And in this day and age, it's not. It's not common for people to stay and work at one company. We question things a lot more and are a lot quicker to... Uh, jump ship and make decisions. And I would say that's the same with our customers as well. Absolutely. I think that's everything. So when you listen to the speakers today, what were the takeaways for you in terms of what do we need to do different to build trust? One of the things that I thought was interesting, I never quite thought about it in this way, was that clarity is one of the pillars of building trust. If people aren't clear, then they're, they're not actually sure what they're trusting in. And that most companies, even if they think they're clear, they're not. Okay. He gave an example of using the word how to really dig in until you get to an action step. Like, for example, I ask you, uh, a business owner, uh, what's one thing that you really want to improve to take your company to the next level? And the business owner says, well, we want to improve our customer service. Well, how? Well, we need to uh, communicate more with our customers. Well, how? Well, we need to follow up on stuff. Well, how? You can keep digging until you get to something actionable that's so clear that you could do it today or you could do it tomorrow. Okay. So everybody knows what to do. It creates team alignment and it creates momentum in the organization. And have you noticed that a lot of people do not want to ask the how question? It's like they're just too busy. In fact, a lot of the interactions I find people are having are forced interactions. Mm -hmm. They're having the interactions where they will say, hey, I'm going to have this conversation because I need to have this conversation, but really I'm not present to have this conversation mm -hmm. because I've got something else to do. So as long as I've told you something in a roundabout fashion, you're good to go. And that doesn't really work anymore, does it? No. So how do you help your clients actually overcome this? Because it's a big problem. This whole abdication of relationships is a massive problem. And what I particularly sort of like what you said, is that clarity bit. Because a big part of the problem with trust is clarity. 
the amount of times I ask, I ask people, okay, so what does this person do? Well, I don't really know. How can you tell this person's had a good day? I don't really mm -hmm. know. Is this person doing a good job? I don't think so. Okay, do why they not? they think they are? They probably do. <laughs> but they have, no, they have absolutely no basis to make a proper judgment call of whether that person's doing a good or bad job. It's just a feeling mm -hmm. based on whether they like them or not, or saying they've done something to piss them off or whatever it is. But they've got no true metrics because, as you said, there's an absolute lack of clarity. Yep. So how do you how do you help your clients get that clarity? Well, feedback is hugely important. So it starts with some of the the fundamentals. Like, do you have a clear vision? Uh, are roles clear? Are desired outcomes or key performance indicators clear from every position? So those are the basics, but that still doesn't mean there's complete clarity or trust or communication. So having a consistent feedback loop where there's certainly performance evaluations, but simple things like somebody walks into your office, like close your laptop screen. You know, don't have your phone out on the table during a meeting. Just actually being present and taking the time, uh, not only does it help to create clarity on expectations and that communication is actually being given and received the way that you hope it does, but it builds the relational capital, right? Which is that trust that we're talking about to help a company thrive. So one of the things that I do with a lot of my clients, have you ever come across the book, The Speed of Trust by Stephen M. R. Covey? Mm -hmm. Probably one of the best books on building trust. And that book's got to be the best part of 10 years now. Probably. But actually the things that he talks about in the book then are as applicable today. But yes, you're absolutely right. It's about being present. And I just think that we very much live in a world of interruption where I've seen it before. And I've seen it where I've sort of sat in on board meetings and I'm watching people being on their phone, checking their emails mm -hmm. all the time and avoiding, absolutely avoiding actually talking about the real issues yep. and actually skirting around things. So were there any other takeaways today that you could say to business owners out there, if you did this, this and this, you're a long way along the journey in building trust? Start by taking the time to really develop solid relationships with your team members. Genuine, solid. Genuine, yeah. you've, got to, you've got to want to be with them. They if, have to know you care, right? They have to absolutely. know that you want them there, that you value their contribution, uh, which studies have shown over and over, like those are the key contributors to job satisfaction, right? Knowing that you're contributing and that your contribution is valued. Yep. Right, that you have a good relationship with your direct manager or leader. Uh, so if your team is happy, uh, happy pr employees are productive employees, and that builds the trust, which builds the bottom line at the same time. So engagement, what else? What was your question? <laughs> well, it's, what advice would we give to entrepreneurs out there, mm. business owners, in terms of building trust? So yes, we've got to, we've got to really communicate well with our employees, actually show them that we care and show them that we're present. What yeah. else? Something I've been encouraging my clients to do a lot is to tell stories. Okay. Stories that uh, prove things like their core values. Like, let me show you, let me tell you a story about a time that we've proven this to be right, we've proven this to be true. Something that takes uh, the most maybe seemingly mundane task from the guy or the gal that's sitting behind the computer just kind of pumping away and connect that to the bigger purpose of the end customer that they helped to serve because we forget about that when you're just kind of doing your own thing in your own little world you forget about the ripple effect and how your personal contribution actually matters to the customer so to uh, take the the key performance indicators and the numbers and define them instead as a like a multiple of a purpose like connect them back to the real benefit to the, the customer, not just to the uh, trackable metric, right? So storytelling. Yeah. So apart from storytelling and engaging with them, would there be a third thing you would advise? Be consistent. Yeah. Be consistent, yeah, absolutely. There's nothing worse than employees not knowing where they stand. Yeah. And I've, and I've seen that where actually managers do not demonstrate leadership, they demonstrate leadership. 
And unfortunately, the shit does kill yeah. employees. It kills your bottom line. Well, thank we you. tend to make excuses for it. Yeah. Like um, we say these things are important, but then it's the manager that maybe is late to the meeting or cancels the meeting, right? So that level of consistency, do what you say you're gonna do. Fantastic, well, thank you very much, Kerry. If anything we've talked about today resonates with you, especially around the consistency, building trust, because building trust isn't an overnight thing. There's gonna be a lot of behavioral changes that you are gonna to have to undergo in order to be able to build that trust with your people. You may have people in your team that actually, no matter what you do, you're not gonna build trust because the relationship is so far gone, it cannot be repaired. Things like that resonate with you and you want to work on them and you want a better form of clarity how to deal with that, head over to balka.com and get in touch. And remember, failing to learn is learning to fail.